that everything good was invented in Italy, which is partly true actually. Mm. Oh my god, guys, it's fantastic. Hey guys, welcome back to Dramatically Expatic. Today we are making a very tasty video. We're gonna try some of the most typical Italian desserts, Italian sweets, pastries, and now we're not gonna rate them, but I'm gonna tell you the story behind them because you've probably tried some of them, at least some of them, numerous times, but I bet you don't know about their regions and their history. So today I'm gonna try some of the most typical traditional Italian desserts and I'm gonna tell you the stories behind their creations. Are you ready? Let's get into the video. So the first stop of today is to show you the real Italian breakfast, which is usually a cornetto and cappuccino or coffee. Um, you might know this as a croissant, however, in Italy it is either called a cornetto or a brioche. Cornetto is more common in the south and brioche is more common in the north. You might think that these were invented in France, which is actually not true. I'm not saying it was invented in Italy either, although I know you might think that I'm saying by now that everything good was invented in Italy, which is partly true actually. However, uh, croissants were actually invented in Austria, in Vienna, and were introduced to Italy in 1683, almost a century before they were introduced into France. Um, so these were first introduced in Veneto region because Venice used to have uh, trade relationships with Vienna and then they were mastered by Italian pastry chefs and became the way they are today. Cornetto, by the way, in Italian means little horn. And you know, when they are made this way and not exactly as uh, the crescent moon as they're normally made in France or in Austria, they actually remind a little horn. Uh, they are typically filled with apricot jam or custard, which is known as crema pasticcera in uh, Italy, or chocolate or pistacchio, or, you know, almost, almost everything or anything you want. So, let's try it. Italian cornetti are very different from the French ones. They are less buttery and they are softer. And you can even see its structure. It has a bit different structure. It's very morbid, very soft. And the jam is usually very exquisite. I haven't reached it yet. However, I'm gonna go now. So now we are going to try some of the very typical Italian desserts, Italian sweets that are usually called mignon. They are called this way because there are bigger portions, of course. However, since I'm not going to be able to eat all of the big portions today because I'm going to try everything, I've decided to try those uh, mignon, so smaller portions. We are in a typical um, pasticceria napoletana, so the sweets here must be really really good and I'm gonna start with beignets so these are usually called beignets in Italy they might look familiar to you because they are also very common in France they are usually filled with custard or chantilly cream uh, they are in France however they were born in Italy they were born in Florence in the 16th century they were created by a pastry chef who was working for Caterina de Medici Later, when she moved to France to become 
the Queen of France. Of course, her court all moved with her, and thus the Binier moved to France and became known in France. They were later developed into a bit different way of uh, pastry, so they became what we know them today. Binier in Italy are typically filled with custard, which is called crema pasticcera, and this is the filling I have here today. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like this. It's basically an Italian um, type of custard. They could be also filled with the Bayone cream, which is a very typical Italian cream, and I'm gonna try one of them later in another place. Or they could be filled with pistachio cream or chocolate or, you know, basically anything. So, I'm gonna try it now. Hmm. You can see the cream inside. It's very yellow and uh, it's very tasty. Try, trust me, it's really tasty. It's um, very dense and uh, creamy. Usually on top of it there is just sugary things, so the most important thing is inside. And I really like how this particular beignet is really full, full, full of cream. Next thing I'm gonna try today is cannolo siciliano. As you can guess from its name, cannolo siciliano comes from Sicily and its origins are actually unknown. Some legend says that they were created during the Arab dominion in Sicily, others say that they were invented by nuns in a monastery in Palermo. They are typically made with this uh, very dense pastry, very crusty pastry, and they're filled with uh, sheep ricotta cheese. They're usually um, topped with pistachio or uh, chocolate, or they could be topped with candied fruit. I have no idea what's inside here, so I'm gonna try it in a minute. This one's good. I think there is some added sugar. Maybe some ricotta was mixed with it, because it's really sweet. Unusually sweet, because usually cannoli are not that sweet but I like it, it's not bad and there is nothing inside which I like too because I'm not a huge fan of uh, cannoli with candied fruit so yeah, that's what it looks inside This thing is called baba. And can you see this mushroom form? It's very typical for baba. And it would always have this mushroom form. So in Italy, it is usually associated with Naples. However, they were invented first in France and they brought to Naples with the Bourbons when the Bourbons um, governed the kingdom of Naples. So this is kind of a pastry. Oops. very spongy one and it's soaked in room sometimes it could be soaked in limoncello I tried both versions and honestly I love both I don't have any particular preference I prefer limoncello to room so maybe I prefer the limoncello version however this is the classical uh, room version and let's try this spongy delicious thing mmm Oh my god, guys, it's fantastic. This thing is, is splendid. It's definitely my favorite today. Look what's it like inside. It's totally the best one. I'm, I'm in love, guys. I'm in a culinary heaven. I, I absolutely love it. So this one is called Binier con Zabayone. Zabayone is this yellowish uh, type of cream that is made of egg yolks and sugar and wine. So yeah, there is a cream made with wine because, you know, we are in Italy and it was invented in Italy as well. So let's try it today. Mm. And it 
it's really really good very creamy it has a very particular structure and for me personally it's my favorite cream however there are other types of cream to fill beignet with so you can choose from a variety of tastes and feelings Next, we're going to my favorite dessert. This is tiramisu. You might recognize it because it has a very typical look. And uh, yeah, once again, I've taken a very small portion of it. Of course, they're normally bigger. So this teeny tiny tiramisu it is. Tiramisu was invented in Veneto region, in Treviso, allegedly in Treviso. And there is a very, very peculiar legend linked to its creation. I would have never believed in this legend if I haven't found it on the official website of Academy of Tiramisu. Can you imagine that there is an Academy of Tiramisu that exists in Italy? So according to that legend, Tiramisu was invented in a brothel in Treviso by the signora who ran that place as an aphrodisiac to give to clients at the end of their evening so that they have enough energy to come back home to perform their conjugal duties. I know this story seems very improbable and kind of weird. However, this is the official story from the website of the Tiramisu Academy. The Tiramisu Academy was created to promote the culture of tiramisu, the history of tiramisu and the true recipe. So, we are not in Veneto, unfortunately, but I'm gonna try it anyway. This one is not bad, although it's not the best tiramisu I've ever had, because um, usually tiramisu is a bit more tender. This one is not bad at all, though. It is usually made of uh, ladyfingers biscuits called Savoyardi in uh, Italy, of mascarpone cheese, eggs, sugar and coffee. Like the ladyfingers biscuits are soaked in coffee and then it's topped with uh, uh, cocoa. So it, it is made the right way. However, I would prefer it to be a bit more tender. Bologna from this point of view is a really cool place because there are so many people from all over Italy living here and you can try most of Italian desserts without even the need to go far away. You can try them all in Bologna in local pasticcerias. And you know, it's a perfect opportunity to get to know more about Italian culture because Italian desserts are fundamental for Italian culture. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, don't forget to put a thumbs up and comment and share it. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button to get the notifications for when new videos are up. Thank you for being here and enjoy your day.